On Friday evening, I sat in my office and reviewed the applications of several candidates who had been notified that a vacancy would soon open in our office. I was a regional manager for a chemical company that supplied weed control chemicals, fertilizers, and soil moisture conservation products. Our survival depends on the ability of farmers to grow or feed what we eat. Following the trend of environmental protection, we are the first company to declare that its products are 100% environmentally friendly. Two of my office workers quit because my husband got a promotion. So they moved here for the next three months. People started looking for a replacement. Our sales team covers eight states in the middle of the country. Our sales growth this year has far exceeded expectations. Kathy, my administrative assistant, walked into my office and said, Ed, eight people have confirmed their interviews for Monday. I'm leaving. Good night. Every Thursday, I travel to one of the states where I work a half day on Friday for a sales meeting and then fly home. This will make Thursday night a party for my wife and her friends. We've spent a lot of money on nannies over the years. My weekly travel provides our salespeople with the personal contact they need to resolve operational and productivity issues. Over the years, this decision has brought tremendous results. In eight years, I have not lost anyone, and this is a success for the company. I got home in time to check a few things before going home. The company tried to talk me out of this part of the job for years, but I found that time alone gave me the opportunity to think about things on my own terms. With a wife who can do it all and three children, the moment of silence I spend behind the wheel is priceless. In addition, this eliminates the need for our department to hire a sales manager. I have a reputation for working within a budget, and I want to maintain that. With all of our children now in middle and high school, and our oldest daughter, my pride and joy, graduating from high school this fall and heading off to college at Southeast Missouri State University, things are looking better for our family. He received a full scholarship from my employer. My youngest daughter just turned 16 and is working on getting her learner's permit. Grace, my wife of 20 years, is an assistant district attorney, a position she held until a year before our youngest daughter was born. He had just been offered a new job as a lawyer for the federal government, and he accepted. Federal authorities praised his uncompromising attitude. It would be stupid to refuse it because it costs twice as much. It was supposed to start in four months. I still can't understand this. He and I are about the same age, but we have never been married. I'm not entirely sure. But contrary to rumors, I don't think he's gay. For 15 years, my parents took my three children the second weekend of every month so my wife and I could spend time together. When they first started, my wife and I were at a crossroads in our marriage. My parents thought we needed to be alone without children. I have to admit that this was the best gift they could have given us because it gave my wife and I time to meet. Without their actions, we would be just another divorce statistic. They still had about three months left because my oldest daughter, Amy, wanted to work in a senator's office in Washington for the summer before finishing her degree in political science. Not long ago, my father bought each of our three children a set of ancestry products written as a joke with my permission, and published as a joke. By following your instructions, we know that a match can only be found if one of your relatives submits their DNA to the same program. My children told me this and I agreed, saying that we all have distant relatives that we don't remember or know about. Perhaps this is the start of a new adventure for all of us. Amy suggested keeping it a secret from mom until they got the results. We understand that it may take up to five or six months to receive a response, this weekend, we went to Nashville to see the Grand Ole Opry and returned on Sunday. My wife planned this special trip to create another lifetime travel memory. I met my wife, Grace, at a soccer game my senior year of college. No, I'm not one of the players on the field. I was one of those invisible workers who sold expensive food to the spectators in the stands. She was one of the younger daughters of a medical trainer, so tickets were always free. That day, she and her companions were arguing about something stupid, and one of them wandered from one influence to another. I'm in the middle. She pushed him away and left. He didn't notice her movement and hit me from behind with all his weight. I fell and slid down the concrete stairs, taking the tray of food with me. The next thing I remember is waking up in the hospital with a bandage on my head. The wound on his forehead required 25 stitches, the doctor said. I think Grace felt guilty because she came every day to make sure I was okay. She knew my whole family before I was born again. I later learned that I was in a coma for almost a week due to internal injuries. As the fog around my vision began to clear, I saw an unknown goddess in front of me. 
At first, I thought that I had reached the gates of heaven and that she was my angel guide. Then my friend became a light next to him. Esmeralda didn't like seeing him standing next to her. I closed my eyes and went back to sleep, praying that Esmeralda wouldn't be there when I woke up, praying that it was just a dream. When I woke up, the dream was still there, but Esmeralda was no longer there. Esmeralda decides that she needs to find new treasures to focus on. God answered my prayer. Grace stayed with me without asking, and my life gradually returned to normal. I never asked him, but we started dating. One thing leads to another. After graduation, I went into sales and she took her first job as an administrative assistant. At a family event, her cousin asked her why she wasn't married yet, and she said because Ed hadn't proposed to me. Three months later, I was standing at the altar and saw the goddess walking towards me. She was five, eight inches tall, had long blonde hair, deep, almost black eyes, and a body that made men drool. Grace and I are married. By the fifth year of marriage, we were both ready to move on. I still don't understand why or how we were separated. As far as I know, she does too. We have just left Lambert to return home. For me, this is a restaurant that lives up to its reputation. Their biggest asset is throwing giant buns into the air for customers to catch because the rest of their food is stale, overcooked garbage. We stopped at this tourist trap because it reminded my wife of her mother's home cooking. Do I need to say more? For some reason, my wife turned off our audio system. When you do this, it means you have something serious to say. I pulled the burner out of my jacket pocket and turned it on. I use this technique in private conversations when I think I would like to check my words later. My wife, Ed, asked me, have you ever thought about cheating? My first thought was the reason for this. My second question is, why did you ask this? Are you cheating or know someone who is? Why do you think it's important to talk about this now? I needed to clear my head before I could speak. Grace, tell the truth, I said. Everyone thinks about cheating. The better question is, will I take action? The answer is no. Why not? Gracia asked. Because I made a wedding vow, I said. They meant a lot to me and still do. Grace said that as social relationships change, marriage vows no longer have the meaning they once had. I think you should let her go and seriously think about finding a lover who is compatible with you. If you are worried about your debt, Consider this, my personal permission to move forward and accept my unconditional blessing. Having one of these will help you appreciate our relationship more and get to know each other better by simply being yourself. This way, once you find the woman you want, you can get the most benefit and joy out of the relationship. I would like a burden without the guilt. I have a problem with his new approach because it means he can use others for our happiness and benefit. This is unacceptable to me. This was a side of her that I had never seen before. This forced me to significantly change my perspective on things. Answer me, my dear wife, I said. Why is it so important to you that you maintain open communication with your consent? Have I done something disgusting that makes you want to find an excuse to end our marriage? After five minutes of silence, I turned the audio system back on. The lack of an answer means a lot to me. Grace always had an answer for everything. Now she is silent. I want to know why. I truly believe there is a reason why my dear wife wants me to have an affair, but why? For some reason, I was convinced that there was something seriously wrong with our lives. I knew I had to find out what it was. I had been driving for about an hour, now about 60 miles from home, when I saw my wife turn the sound off again. I took the burner out of my jacket pocket and turned it on again. I'm so sorry, Ed, Grace said. I think I've read too many Harlequin novels. These ideas must come from nothing. With that, he turned our audio system back on and decided it was all over. The problem is that my three children and I know that she hates these books because they are her mother's favorite books. All his life, he called his trailer junk and thought that every time his mother gave him the last piece of the trailer, he would take it home and throw it in the trash. As I drove the last 40 miles, I realized that the only thing I didn't fully understand was Thursday night with friends. It's just not important and not serious enough to be of concern. On the rare occasions when I was home, she was happy to change her schedule so she could be home with me too. To this day, I have no reason to doubt those nights because I trusted him completely. The problem I'm facing is that because of the conversation I just had, I now have reason to doubt his goal of spending Thursday night with his friends. Have you gone to bars with friends and had questionable relationships such as casual flings? I knew that when I returned home, I would have to find out what happened at the bachelorette party. We entered the corridor at the same time as the children and parents. 
Once inside, I served my parents a rye and cola cocktail. They told me what they and their children did over the weekend. For my parents, the time they spend with their grandchildren is priceless. As they say, it is their grandchildren who help them stay young and relevant. Each event was organized according to their wishes, so my parents were exposed to cultural events that they had never been to before. They stayed for about an hour before returning home. I walked them both to the car. Ed, my father asked quietly, what time would be best to come to your office tomorrow to talk privately? I've been doing interviews all day, I said. Let's say around 15 o'clock. Whatever the problem, I'm here to help you. The problem isn't me and your mom, my father whispered. It's an issue that affects his wife and youngest daughter. It's better not to say anything else because your wife is watching us. Okay, Dad, I can do it. I'll come after work and we'll be done in half an hour. I said it loud enough for Grace to hear through the window. When I saw her leave, I entered the house and grabbed the car keys. Then I grabbed the toolbox and put it in the trunk of the car. Hey, baby, I said. I have to go to my father's house to do some things tomorrow after I leave, so I might be a little late. I heard you from the window, Grace replied. Don't worry, we can have dinner later. Father and mother arrived on time. They were taken to my office. We sat down and waited for the employee to bring us coffee. After Katie gave birth, she closed my office door as she left. Ed, my father said, I'm so sorry about my stupid idea of sending DNA to our grandchildren. They found a DNA match to April. His grandmother is looking for her son and her offspring. As he spoke, he pulled out an ancestry com form. It contained the woman's name and an incorrect phone number. I'm really sorry. When my father looked at me, he realized how much he surprised me. Dad, I don't think this is a mistake. So let's see what we can find, I told him. I dialed the number from my desk phone and put it on record and speakerphone. I wanted to make sure I had a permanent record of the conversation. After two calls, he was taken away. My name is Edward Paul Adams and I am looking for a DNA match to Beatrice Smith through Ancestry.com. I said, can I talk to him? Talk to him, young man, the woman said. How can I help you? That's a difficult question, I said. Anyway, I just found out that my little girl is your granddaughter. You mean April Mary Adams, she asked. Yes, I replied that it was her. Well, you probably know my son. I had to give him up for adoption when he was 15, he said. I said if I knew his name. He was adopted by the Barrow family. Smith said his name at the time was Luke Robert. My face turned pale. My parents had tears in their eyes because we knew the name so well. Your honest and direct comments have been a living nightmare for me. I said he is alive and well. He is currently the district attorney for Cape Girardeau County, Missouri. He is also my wife's boss. I can tell he was never married, and now I think I know why. He's my only son, she said. I have stage four lung cancer and I don't have long to live. Will you allow your daughter April to visit me before I leave? If you can't afford it, I'll gladly pay for the tickets. I want to meet her and give her your inheritance. Mrs. Smith, under the circumstances, I will allow you to negotiate with my parents. Since you're only in one state, they're taking her on a special trip this weekend so you can see her, I told him. I don't think I would let my daughter travel alone. Do you want me to do anything else? Get a notarized statement authorizing my lawyer to do a DNA test, Smith said. Because of the value of April's estate, I needed to make sure that this was what we intended to do before changing my will. No problem. I'll call my father, I said. They can discuss the details and show you the way to your home. I stood up and walked out of the office, handed Katie my personal voice recorder, and asked that my conversations on the device and phone calls that I was still recording be converted to text messages and confirmed. I need this court and divorce form. Do I still need to prepare a permit for a DNA test? Asked Katie. She remembers having to listen in silence while the tape played, but we had to keep it a secret for several weeks. I wonder what my ex-wife was doing last Thursday night. I walked into my assistant's office and said, David, I need to talk to you and your wife as soon as possible. I need your cooperation on a personal matter. David looked at me and immediately realized that this was something serious and he needed help. David said he would have to leave his job soon. I send him a message and ask him to come. I return to the office and we discuss the details. With a spare key to my house, they'll have to pack up some April stuff and leave next Friday. I need to pick her up from school at 10 and take her there. I walked with my parents to the door when David's wife arrived. I told him to meet them at their office as soon as possible. Using modern communication tools, Kathy prepared copies and transcripts. I gave David and Cheryl a copy to read. I suggest you start by reading my conversation with my wife. 
I gave Kathy the documents my father gave me to make copies of the powers of attorney my father received and which we prepared and told her to find the best option for me. Cheryl and David have known my wife and I for many years. Today, they both struggle with what they learned. Cheryl and Grace grew up moving from house to house. Of course, although they were never very close, they knew everything about each other. Cheryl is shocked when she learns the truth about previously unknown events. After all these years, do you still think they are lovers? Cheryl asked. Or was it one of those situations where they tried something but then realized they were wrong? I don't know, but I need your cooperation to find out, I said. Over the next few weeks, David will have to use his company car to travel to sales meetings. Cheryl, I'll have to take your car because no one will be looking for it. This means that you will have to drive David's car. I'll let the company know and we'll incorporate this into your cross training, David. So I'm afraid you'll have to do this for the next three months. You followed your wife on Thursday night and wrote down everything you could, David said, because your wife will always think that you travel every week. My gut tells me that this is still the case, because why did my wife suddenly ask me to have an affair with her blessing? I said, if Burrow hadn't changed jobs, nothing would have changed. I think Grace was planning on moving in with Luke Robert Barrow when she started working in St. Louis. Louis, if Grace could prove that I was having an affair, she believed I would have the right to file for divorce. Damn, Cheryl said. I think Grace could do something similar. Today in our society, it is common to blame our opponents for our actions. This is an effective way to distract yourself from your own behavior. Ed, if you find any evidence this Thursday, Cheryl said, call me and I'll have the operator call him and his family and say, you've been in an accident, I can give you the details. The police were informed about the condition or absence of the clothing and its location. Some police officers are seeking revenge against prosecutors for some of their past actions against them. Casey came in and said, Four months ago, Dale Allen Britton left the DA's office because he couldn't work there anymore and opened his own practice. Because now, I have faxed all the information to him, and he is waiting for you. You should hurry up. Ed, say hi to Dale for me and wish him all the best, Cheryl said, saying we still miss him. I walked through the door and met a man who had taken the women's rights movement to the Supreme Court in Rovers, United States. Wade, how he saw the law and how it was applied was crucial. Everything is becoming clearer. When Grace started working for Luke Barrow, problems immediately began to arise in our marriage. This happened around the same time that I was promoted to sales manager and had to start a 24-hour travel schedule to attend sales meetings. If they still have an affair every Thursday night, then I've been spoiling them against their will for over 15 years. They must be laughing at me behind my back. Now Luke's expensive Christmas and birthday gifts mean something to her. When I got out of the car, Dale was waiting for me. I found out that Cheryl had called him to tell him about our plans. Dale even provided me with the keys needed to get into Luke Barrow's house, as well as the code to disable the alarm, if it was installed. He gave me a piece of paper with a phone number. This number will direct you to those who can provide you with services at a reasonable cost, he said. I spoke with them, and they are waiting for your call. He explained that he grew up on the street and always had connections to organize things. He said the access code to Barrow's home would be valid until the end of next week, when Luke Barrow would be reminded to change his access rights. She wants to sue Barrow for child support from her April birthday. All of this will cost Luke Barrow dearly. Under state law, the agreement cannot be terminated by filing for bankruptcy. If Dale succeeds, his former boss will be destroyed before he can complete his job. He wants to sue my wife Grace for adultery, spousal neglect, and for being the daughter of my daughter Luke Barrow. Dale recommended that we temporarily transfer my parental rights to my parents until April, pending the outcome of the trial. I ask him why. This way, Dale explains, they won't know you're going to use April against them. I know that Luke will be mean and cruel to you. He will treat you like all the lower elements and give them maximum punishment for little things. Sometimes the best defense is a strong offense. I offered to pay for his services in advance with my debit card, but he refused saying that my wife would immediately notice and guess what I was doing. Write me a check, and I'll hold it until you hear from me. From the moment I left, I was confident that whatever I did would give me a head start and time to solve the problem. Katie, I have definitely found what works best for me. After I left, I realized that Dale had his reasons for acting this way towards Luke Burrow. Grace and Luke will soon face many problems they don't even know exist. Dale Britton just created his own version of the trick game. 
I signed all the paperwork needed to transfer custody to my parents in April starting Friday and gave them a copy. When Dale and I explained the whole situation to them, they agreed it made sense. I waited for Cheryl to arrive in her 2002 Ford Taurus. David goes on his first business trip. Cheryl left me her car and drove David's car home. My oldest daughter told me that her mother didn't come home for dinner because she planned to meet friends right after she got home from work. When Cheryl arrived, we changed them and I put the suitcases in the trunk. Cheryl said Ed, the dispatcher, and all the guys knew. I just need to know where. Thank you, I said. Dale told me that if everything went according to plan, he would call him to personally serve them with the summons. I wonder why Dell wants to beat Luke Burrow so badly. Selling is the beginning, Cheryl said. Luke found it difficult to keep his words. It was fun to see Grace and Luke leave. The couple went to Charlie's bar and grill and ate steak together. Then one goes one way and the other goes the other. I went to Luke Barrow's house and waited. Friends from Dell, now my team, are ready for anything. It was in a safe location with a direct view of Luke's house. Grace comes first. Entering the code to disable the alarm into the box, he unlocked the door with his key. We filmed her for quite a long time until we saw her enter the house. Luke arrived 10 minutes later. Grace opened the door to greet him. Her blouse was completely unbuttoned and she was not wearing a bra. Her large breasts were completely exposed. Luke hugged Grace and kissed her passionately. While they were kissing, I noticed how his hands began to play with her breasts. As soon as they closed the door, I stopped shooting. Six of the eight rooms in Luke's house are equipped with video and audio. Neighbor Luke Barrow, whose son is serving a long prison sentence, agreed to let us use his house as a base. Everything recorded in Barrow will be broadcast live to every Facebook page you are connected to. We discovered that my car was being guarded by a team because Grace thought I would give in to temptation and start looking for new love that night. I texted Cheryl to tell her what I had just heard. She called her husband David and said they were looking after him. As a former Marine, he took immediate precautions and intentionally messaged me. I said that everything was ready and gave the address. While I was waiting for something to happen, I snuck into the Barrows' house and took the valves off the tires of all their cars because I didn't want to give them a chance to start fixing the damage they had caused. I... Lovers have nowhere to go for long. Police knocked on the door with the lights on, looking for Grace Adams. Luke Barrow tried to deny his presence until police showed him his car in the driveway. Grace finally walked to the door, wrapped only in a sheet. Mrs. Grace Adams, your husband Edward Paul's car was involved in an accident near Little Rock, Arkansas. When your parents couldn't find you, they suggested you look here. I was glad to see Grace's pale face. The police deliberately lied to them to make them both feel uncomfortable. At the same time, the officer got into the patrol car and drove after me. From the moment the police arrived until they left, everything was recorded and broadcast live on Facebook. We have evidence that something is going on and the good citizens of Cape Town now know it. At midnight, Amy, my eldest daughter, called and said, Dad, Mommy isn't home yet. All my calls went to his answering machine. I was worried because she usually didn't leave this late. What I should do? Call Luke Barrow on his cell phone and ask him to give it to your mother, I said, and sent him a message. What does this have to do with your boss? asked Amy. He's been her Thursday night boyfriend for over 16 years, I said. I hung up and sent Amy a clip of the magazine where Grace was talking to the police, as well as a clip of Luke Barrow wearing only pajamas and using a secret phone. Ten minutes later, Amy called again and said that her mother's phone suddenly rang. She calls me. He said he was on Lower East Broadway and had four flat tires. I knew I was lying and said it was impossible because I wasn't anywhere near Luke Barrow's house. She said she was telling the truth, so I told her I saw a video of her and her lover talking to the police. He asked me what the clip was and I sent it to him. Mom couldn't explain why she was wearing sheets. Don't expect me to be home for a few hours, but you can do me a favor and open the front door, I told him. I was about to get out of the car when my daughter Amy saw me. She watched as I pulled the suitcase out of the trunk and walked over to her. As soon as I put my suitcase down, my phone rang. This is Dale Allen Britton, I answered and turned on the speaker. Ed, I just invited a fan to your house, Dale said. Your wife and her lover are now prohibited from coming within 500 feet of you or any of your children. Before I return home, I will inform the Cape Town police. Do yourself a favor and don't talk to him at all, Dale added. If he comes looking for clothes, call the police. Understood. They told me and my eldest daughter. Thanks, Dale. Amy, open the garage so I can park Cheryl's car, I said. 
I should be in Little Rock. We did it. Dad, is that why they came to our house at 6 o'clock in the afternoon to change the lock on the door? Amy asked. Yes, I said it was a last-minute decision. I asked Kathy to order it. Amy asked. The DNA test your grandfather sent to Ancestry.com, I said. They found a match with April. She told me at work on Monday when I contacted this woman. It turned out that her mother's boss was her son. Gave him up for adoption when he was 15 years old. Amy's daughter was surprised. I held her tightly until she calmed down. Then we dimmed the lights and went into the kitchen to talk quietly. I turned on the recorder and let Amy listen to my conversation with her mother on the way home from Nashville. Her mother's words inspired her deeply. Dad, why does mom want you to have an affair? Amy, I asked her to mitigate her own consequences. Unfortunately, her advice revealed the truth. It knocked on the door. Not having to go home, Amy opened the door. Police say they stopped Grace's taxi and told her that if she continued, she would be violating the restraining order. My eldest daughter and I talked about this all evening. We all agreed that Grace should become a writer because she always has stories to tell about partying with her friends. I still can't believe my mom had an affair with the same man for over 16 years, Amy said. Why don't we see this? It's easy, I said. Little children, you are still small. I'm a sales manager and have to travel to a different state every week to attend meetings. Because of the trust we have as a couple, I see no reason not to invite your mom to our weekly sleepover with the girls. Trust me, we all trust him, Amy said. This blinds us to what is happening behind the scenes. I was in shock until my daughter said those words, I'll never see this. It was she who took advantage of our trust in her, which allowed her to escape punishment for so long. Amy saw my eyes fill with tears and said, this is what hurts the most. It wasn't an affair or a lie. It was the realization that she was deliberately using our faith in her as a tool to maintain the only relationship that could help exist. It made sense to her. If your mother did this to someone she loved, I said, imagine what he'll do to us when he starts hating us for what he went through. Amy got up and made a cup of freshly brewed coffee for us. It was then that I realized that Dawn had arrived. I received a text message on my phone. This is what your mother gave you. She wants to talk to me soon, I said. He said our eldest son was having problems at home and we needed to discuss it before I returned from my trip. How would you respond? The daughter asked worriedly. Don't worry, Luke, be happy. You can always laugh at my big idiot behind my back. I said that when I wrote that sentence. You could always move to Saint. Louis with Luke Burrow, which was always your plan, but not with our kids. Amy looked at me in complete shock. Your mother doesn't need me anymore, I said. My usage has ended. She wanted me to have an affair so she could use it against me in divorce court. She never thought they would catch her after so long. It must have been painful for Amy to hear what I wrote to her mother. Only a few people can realize the truth. Most people will lash out at the person who revealed it because the truth hurts. In time, they will accept it. When my daughter started crying again, I stood up and hugged her. When we heard Eric and April moving, we calmed them down. As usual, I turned on the Cavos 12 TV in the kitchen to watch the morning local news. They soon went to have breakfast and start the day. They were surprised to see me at home. We were both surprised to see my wife's photo on the screen. My son turned up the volume out of curiosity. At that moment, I felt sorry for my children as she and Luke discussed how stupid and foolish I was. Grace said directly, Doofus is so stupid that he does not notice everything that happens around him. Then his mom said something sarcastic to me, which made them both laugh. Then the journalist spoke. I don't think they're laughing now he said. After five hours of live streaming her longtime lover's behavior on Facebook, her plan to trick Edward Adams into divorcing her and living with her failed. In the next scene, Dale complains about the two of them. The journalist explained the reasons for filing the complaint. Alice ran up to me, sat on my lap, and began to sob. It was a horrific experience for the 16-year-old girl when she discovered that her father was not her biological father, but her mother's long-term lover. After April calmed down, Amy helped me explain what happened after her mother and I returned from Nashville. I called their school and gave them Friday and Monday off so they could get used to it and deal with most of the emotions. We were about to start breakfast when April said, Dad, the police chief is lying on the floor. This caught our attention and we turned up the volume. It has been revealed that Grace Adams and our current prosecutor, Luke Barrow, are under criminal investigation. Special teams from across the country were called in to investigate. I believe that when a person's behavior becomes public, 
The public cannot publicly accept his private behavior. Hypocrisy dominates our society every day. After breakfast and cleaning, I sat the three children down at the table. I showed each of them a copy of the letter my father had received. Then I said, in April, my parents will pick you up and take you to your biological father's mother. She's dying of cancer and asked to meet with you. There's a good reason for this, but I think it's best to let the woman you're dating explain it to you. To me, you are my daughter, and you will always be my daughter. If you have questions, ask your grandparents. Amy, can you help your sister get ready while I call my parents, I asked. As soon as the girls left, the son said, Dad, how are you? I can't take it anymore, I replied. I continued to try to remain calm. Remember, my son, if this happens to you, as a parent to others in your life, you need to stay strong. With these words, I called my parents and told them where I was. They said they would be there as soon as the car was loaded. There was still an hour left before boarding the plane. Little did I know that at that moment my relationship with my son would forever change for the better. The three of us watched as my well-behaved daughter followed her parents to meet her biological grandmother for the first time. My biggest prayer is that everything will work out and that she will continue to treat me the same way when I return. The prosecutor's office looked like a morgue. After Grace Adams's car was towed and the valves on all four tires were replaced, she went out and bought new clothes. Luke Barrow read the complaint against him. Although they did not have a direct DNA sample, they established a biological link between him and him so that he could not deny his paternity. Now everyone across the state knows the truth about their long-term relationship and affair. This, and the fact that they hid April Adams' true identity, turned into a political nightmare. Under the law, fraud has expanded over time to include failure to disclose all relevant facts about a situation. Dell filed suit against both in civil court. It becomes increasingly clear that they have been cheating on her husband, Ed, for years. Every lawyer she talked to said Ed Adams and Dale Britton would succeed. The lawyer I was still talking to didn't want anything to do with it either. Most of them had heard about what Deiter did during his last stint as a defendant. It was noted that most objections are based on the assumption that certain facts are presented in such a way that they can be challenged. By the time Dyer presented his case to the court, most were lost. For Facebook to reveal their actions and openly admit that they were trying to destroy an honest man in order to loot as much of his property as possible doesn't make much sense, but given their status in society, it made headlines. Grace had just left a store that she had been shopping at for years because of the quality and unique collection of clothes. The last thing she expected was for the woman to ask her if she was crazy because she had to know it would be bad. When Grace asked what the woman was talking about, she replied that the woman said she had been a Facebook star for at least five hours. About one afternoon, he returned to Luke's house to find that the company had just completed a house call. They believed the house belonged to her and advised her and her husband to reset all security codes in the house. It was only after they had left that he realized that he had not been asked to confirm his presence with an electronic signature. He called Luke and asked who wanted to make sure he couldn't find a new job in St. Louis. Louis. When he asked her why, she told him what she had reported. They then begin to suspect that Ed is not just protecting himself, since everyone knows that his new job is a political mission for the deep state. After making a cup of coffee, she sat down to read the divorce petition. The first blow came when she learned that it was the words she said to her husband that aroused his suspicions. Her husband wanted to know why she asked him to intentionally hurt another person and use it for his own personal gratification. But Adam's mom and dad told him that a DNA match on Ancestry.com helped him discover April's true parentage and provided compelling evidence of her involvement. Grace began to realize that Ed must already know what was going on. Ed was the mastermind behind what happened last night. Ed reveals the hidden truths of his life. He had just taken a sip of coffee when the doorbell rang. He stood up, walked to the front door, opened it, and found a neighbor that Luke didn't like. Mr. Primrose, he said, may I help you? He handed her a formal envelope and said, Ed, your husband. Last night he used my house as a base of operations against you and your longtime lover. And I was glad to let him do it because it was the first time. Luke Barrow gave my son the maximum sentence for this crime. I just thought you might be interested to know that the information in the envelope I gave you will also be sent out this afternoon to everyone you know at home. Ed asked me to ask you if you still laugh at him. Now?
She watched him leave with a bright smile on her face. Grace returned to the kitchen and opened the envelope. There are photographs inside. They first use his key to get into Luke's house and then greet him at the door when he returns home. They engaged in sexual play in the living room and took photographs of one person taking off the other's clothes. Everything is in the photographs, even the way the police confronted her. Ed's team is very professional. The delay was so long that it is now revealed that he is working with a group of police officers who want revenge on Luke for their own reasons. But the last typewritten paper signed by her husband said it all. If this became public knowledge, many questions would arise that they were not prepared for. Her plan to force her husband to submit failed before her eyes. The question now is how to minimize the damage Ed caused and make the incident a public spectacle. Grace, when we got home from Nashville last Sunday, I knew you were trying to trick me into getting a divorce. Since then, I confess, I have tried to understand what I did to turn your love for me into pure hatred. Now I know why. I understand that you blame me for what was missing in your life when we only had two children. I think you feel trapped in your marriage and want to go back to your carefree single life. Otherwise, you would not have turned to him to regain your chastity. By doing this, you allow yourself to take your mind off the things you hate for a few hours each week. I know that the only reason you stayed married to a man you hated and thought was dead was because Luke didn't want to take on the responsibility of raising a child, even ours. You would never leave her alone with me, considering what you think of me. These voids. Your pride won't allow it. It forces you to live a life of deliberate lies. Every day you slip away from responsibility. Your contempt for who and what I am grows. In your eyes, I am becoming more and more stupid and idiotic. How long have you and Luke been laughing at this stranger? Did you arouse his love for you by humiliating me or ridiculing me? What I cannot forgive or forget is the message you and the man you consider your real husband sent to our children because it will affect them for the rest of their lives. I still can't get over the way Luke has fun with you playing with my life and our children's lives as if we were nothing more than pawns on a playground. Cavos 12 summed it up well when he asked if you still make fun of Grace Adams' husband, Edward Adams. I watched as Amy, Eric, and April watched you and your loved ones reveal your plans to me through the media. It was shocking to see our kids joke about how easy it was to fool this stupid idiot. I didn't ask him about his relationship with you in the future. At this point, I can honestly say that it doesn't exist. The reason for all this was complete ignorance of me, which you and your beloved Luke despise. At least we all know you're happy because you've given me a reputation as a pathetic idiot for the rest of my life. Perhaps you both can celebrate your victory tonight. Bye. Grace's hands were shaking so much that she dropped the newspaper. He is like an angry, bitter, hateful, cruel, and indifferent dog. The only thing she cares about is herself and the satisfaction of her physical needs. Then her sobs broke the silence in the room. Ed was the only person I knew who could ruin someone's reputation without openly judging them. No one who reads the book can question his observations about his own behavior. In his opinion, everything he did was for the sake of prolonging life and not for the sake of love. She should have realized that it was Luke who insisted she leave him and the kids before she got pregnant in April. Luke's new job forces him to accelerate his long-term plans. They originally wanted to wait until April graduated from high school so that her true origins could be revealed without any real consequences. In a way, he was right, because at that moment, she was not smiling. In fact, he emphasized that it was his own actions that proved the truth of his words. Ed believes that out of contempt for who and what he is, they are trying to completely destroy him, not to mention that it was a declaration of war. If he falls, he will take them both with him. Grace took the book back. The divorcee complained and continued reading. It's really devastating. One of the lawsuits accuses them of fraud because they hid April's true origins. She was charged with emotional and psychological neglect, treason, and libel. But when he saw the amount of compensation that was asked for in the fraud case, he felt bad. If he wins, he and Luke will be out of money for a long time. Ed and his lawyers argued that they could no longer treat them like the idiots they thought they were. Saturday was a crazy day for me and my two older kids. From early morning until four o'clock in the afternoon, relatives and the whole family came to visit. Grace's parents, two brothers, a sister, and their partners came to show their support. Everyone brought their favorite dish, and we ate a lot. Even my brothers and sisters came to visit me. The three of us are surrounded by love and support. 
It's hard for everyone to understand how Grace managed to fool them for so long. Everyone agrees that the social media posts prove that she is trying to destroy me out of hatred. My father-in-law and I grabbed a cold beer and went out onto the porch for a few minutes. Edward, forget about it, he said. Cora is here to give you some privacy, and we will keep her away from you until you calm down. He stayed with me until the end. Cora and I are planning to change our will, he said. Grace's share will be divided equally between her three children. She may be our daughter, but I will never forgive her for who she is. We had just finished cleaning the house when Dad called. April met this woman, my father said. We certainly see a certain family resemblance here. Their meeting went well, Mrs. Smith asks about her family situation and allows April to express her feelings about it. It's good to see that she kept the secret. My father said that the lawyer took the necessary blood tests and then took me for a private interview. He asked me about Luke Burrow and I told him everything we knew. I learned that his biological father was serving a life sentence for murdering his lover's husband. If April had not been in Luke's life, Luke would have inherited his biological mother's legacy. Don't worry, Dad, I replied. Dale Britton was issued a restraining order prohibiting him from coming within 500 feet of us. It was a tense day, and many loved ones from both sides came to offer their support. We stayed at Mrs. Smith's house as guests. Your mother is honored to be treated with such dignity, Dad explained. April and Mrs. Smith are upstairs. We love you all. Her lawyer said that she had not seen a smile on the old woman's face for a long time. Wait, I'll give the phone to your mother. Ed, I had the opportunity to speak with Beatrice alone. He asked me what kind of son you are, so I talked about your life as openly and honestly as possible. We discussed in detail what happened last week. He shared that he allowed himself to decide to tell April why he wanted to see her. He said he hadn't had this much respect from strangers in a long time, and then thanked us all for showing him how to handle situations involving his property. My mother continued, Your plan is to leave all your assets in a trust, and put them in April's name so you can manage them until she turns 25. Text me when you leave so I can be sure I'll be home when you pick her up. I texted April to let her know we all miss her and gave her my best wishes, Dad. We finally have some time before David and Cheryl get in the car with me to clean the house. I had to apologize to him for forgetting to do this. Do it, bring it back. Cheryl said the police chief saw an opportunity to arrest Luke Barrow, worked with Dale. Dale convinces him to investigate something suspicious. When I came back, the staff were upset and upset, David said. I told them in general terms that for most of the week, some of us knew what was going on and were trying to help. It's been a roller coaster of emotions here since Thursday night, I said. Sometimes it is still difficult for children to survive, so I have a day off on Mondays. Have you heard from Grace? Cheryl asked. Not since Thursday night, I replied. She and Luke are probably busy with their lives now that they've publicly expressed their opinions about us. My youngest daughter called me on Sunday morning and asked if she and her grandparents could come home late on Monday. I bless you if your grandparents agree. She thanked me for letting her go. I asked why. April said that Mrs. Smith made me realize that it wasn't my fault because I was born because of my mother's infidelity. Dad, Mrs. Smith has made it clear that we are all innocent victims and do not deserve to be treated this way. Devastated by the behavior of my son and my mother, I love you, Dad, he said before hanging up. Last Monday evening, Amy, Eric, and I watched as our parents pulled into the driveway. My parents looked tired and stressed. He threw himself into my arms as soon as he got out of the car. I admit, it's great that my youngest daughter is at home. The father opened the trunk and took out a suitcase. Eric immediately took him to his room. The three then went into the living room so April could tell them all about her new grandmother. This gave my parents and I a chance to catch up. We go into the kitchen. While I prepared fresh coffee, my parents shared with me their thoughts about Mrs. Beatrice Smith. When we left, she went silent, my father said. She looked like she was ready to die. It was important for her to see and accept April. Mom accepted the official envelope and handed it to me. He explained to me that his lawyer gave it to me on Beatrice's instructions. I opened it and took out a letter. The first thing I noticed was a check for $50,000. The letter is short and to the point. This amazing woman thanked me for making her wish come true. Before I contacted her, she told me that she was late for her appointment. DNA confirms the biological connection. April is a beautiful young woman. You raised her. 
Use the tools I give you to overcome the difficult times you face and remember to stay true to your values. I made my parents read it. It's hard to imagine that my parents and I were able to fulfill the last wish of a dying person. Over coffee, I told them everything that happened during the trip. I said that I felt that the worst emotional state of our family was behind us and that starting tomorrow we would return to normal life. The rest of the week went pretty well considering the circumstances. Grace tried to contact each of our children by cell phone, but was told to stop calling. The head office was glad that I stopped going to sales meetings and started looking for a sales manager for the first time in 10 years. I was sitting in my office looking at my monthly sales report when Kathy stuck her head in the door and said, let's go. I looked at her and asked, now I've received an email notification that his last letter to Grace was published on the Southeast Missourian News website. I went to the website and found a section called Cancellation to Explore. Katie came up to me, climbed onto my shoulder and began to read. After reading this, he cried. I explained to him that I wrote it in an emotional moment. Perhaps I'm being too harsh. No, Ed, Katie said. They simply calmly and directly point out obvious phenomena in their long-term behavior. Any of them could resign and confess. Luke enjoys the benefits of a long-term relationship without the associated costs. I thought so, I said. Look at the last comment, I said, reading it out loud. As a feminist, I have spent most of my life fighting for equality and self-determination. What this woman and her lover did to her husband and children will forever taint our sport. Grace and Luke have dinner at Charlie's Bar and Grill. On Friday evening, it is usually full of people, but today there were only empty tables around him. When the waitress asked why, he explained that we have two people who refuse to sit next to you in public. The waitress continued, probably because most people had read her husband's last letter to Mrs. Adams on the Southeast Missouri newspaper website. Grace and Luxor left shortly after asking for the check, realizing they were better off staying out of the public eye for a while. They both get used to the fact that their world has become much smaller due to their actions. As they walked out, Grace noticed that her parents were sitting at the table, waiting for their order. Grace walked up to her. Luke followed her. As she spoke, her father looked at her and said, Mr. Barrow, I suggest you get your companions out of here so that my wife and I can eat in peace. Grace left the restaurant with tears in her eyes, finally realizing this. Once you can go, it's too far and there's no turning back. She will have to live with the consequences of what she and Luke did for the rest of her life. When they got to Luke's house, they went to the website and saw for themselves what the comments said. Clearly, there is a palpable hatred for both. Three months later, I sat in the passenger seat of my car and watched April drive. That morning, we drove to Wichita, Kansas because we heard that her grandmother Beatrice had died. We went to the airport to take a private jet from your hotel. April was devastated by the loss, and after returning from her trip, they became close through constant phone calls. Amy and Eric were very supportive, and it brought the four of us closer together. Everyone started pushing me to meet new people, but I was scared. Burn once, watch out twice. Luke and Grace now live in St. Louis. Louis. Federal authorities allowed him to start work early. The municipality would be happy to get rid of it as quickly as possible if they could pay over $45,000 in questionable fees. They are now living in a rented three-bedroom apartment in case they have to file for bankruptcy due to the ongoing civil suit. According to Missouri law, each of them can keep only $10,000 of their capital. Our divorce was finalized under state law. Grace had to pay my living expenses while they were in school and 50% of their expenses while they lived in the dorms. The civil fraud trial is expected to begin in two weeks. My children still refuse to talk to their mother, as does her family. He learned the hard way that people can only accept so much bullshit before moving on. April had to endure a meeting with her biological father, organized by Norwegian Children's Services. Things didn't go very well for him. She said her mother told her he was a narcissist, like his biological father, and that he should not be intimate with any woman. With a child welfare worker present, April told him she believed he and his mother were dead. We went to his grandmother's funeral. Then the lawyer told me that his inheritance was huge. It's great for both of us. As trustees, in consultation with our daughter, we decided to sell her grandmother's house along with all of her possessions except personal jewelry and a few photographs that April wanted to keep. When we return home, the school year is coming to an end. I was preparing for my first day in court on a Wednesday when April arrived. 
Dad, can you set up a meeting with Luke, Mom, and their lawyers, as well as us and Dale on Tuesday? April said. I think so, but why? I asked. I hope they realize the true cost of their actions, April said. My grandmother Beatrice recommended this to me, so I called Dale and we set up a meeting. It was a wonderful day meeting Luke, Grace, and their lawyers. I asked for this meeting, April said. I want to give this to my biological father. Here is the location of his father and his request to visit him in prison. He was sentenced to life imprisonment for the murder of his lover's husband. April handed him a sealed envelope with her name on it. I love the expressions on Luke and Grace's faces. Everyone should know that my biological grandmother left me over $100 million, which was held in trust for my father, Edward Adams, until I was 25, April explained. Luke, if she hadn't found out about me, the money could have been yours. In April, everything was still happening. When he learned how I was created and what the consequences were, his view of moral principles and standards came into play. Then she leaves you. In my grandmother's eyes, what you did is truly disgusting. Dale Britton, my foundation will pay my father's fees, April said. Luke and Mom, you might want to try mediation before you go to court because we will take this case to the Supreme Court if necessary. Mom, you must realize that even if you believed me to sin, you have no right to think that this is acceptable. Fortunately, my grandmother made me understand that it was my father's moral principles, standards, and opinions that made me who I am. I left that meeting feeling proud and humbled. My daughter told me everything. What happens tomorrow doesn't matter anymore because today I'm lucky that I have something really important. Subscribe to our channel so that the second drop does not deceive you and listen to the next story because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you are under 18 years of age, please do not listen to the following episodes.